We now have a new presidential administration. We have something called the alt-right that a lot of us hadn't heard of just weeks ago. We don't know what do people think in other countries, especially people in Europe who might have lived or grown up in a system where this was real. The this I'm talking about is that. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Carrie Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you, your new best friend, streamcasting and live FM broadcasting from West Coast to East Coast, here and there in a few spots in Europe. This is Go Harrison. Many of us, many of us, well, how about 7 billion people across the planet were actually surprised at the turnout in the recent U.S. election. We have this new organization called the Alt-Right, or Alt-Right, the Old Right, or whatever they are. All these things that most Americans had never heard of. We're lucky to be joined today by Jan Tussing. He's an independent uh, journalist, a German journalist, and a filmmaker who has been working with German public radio for 20 years, exactly 20 years now. That would be two decades for us Americans who are just learning our math skills. Uh, A foreign correspondent for Great Britain. Uh, then Western Africa, and until recently for the U.S. based out of Los Angeles. Now working in Frankfurt in the Cultural Department. You won the L.A. Press Club Award in 2012 for the International Feature Category for a report in poverty in Silicon Valley. Poverty in Silicon Valley. We have uh, what appears to be a, a very aggressive administration. If you are Steven Spielberg and you're making a movie and you cast all your actors to be a certain way, uh, that's what your movie's about. So we have an administration who's casting his surrounding characters. Uh, A lot of people think it looks similar to what we saw in European history, say... 70. 70 years ago. American, learning math skills. (laughs) So should we just assume that everyone's kidding, or what are you guys saying in Europe? Well, I can tell you what the reaction was in Germany, and uh, it was pretty fierce. Nobody thought it would happen, yeah. and then afterwards everybody said, well, nobody thought Brexit would happen, and then it did. <coughs> so, actually, I think nobody thought it would happen, yeah. even though there was a big, uh, everybody was tense. But then afterwards there was a huge shock, and now, since the election, there's nothing else on the news in Germany but what Trump is uh, doing and uh, well, thinking to do. Right, right. We have something here called Godwin's Law, which is whenever you say Nazi or Hitler, immediately people glaze over and you can't talk about anything seriously anymore. It's called Godwin's Law, and it works in the American psyche. The New York Times in 1922 wrote an article about a guy named Adolf Hitler, and they said he's just kidding. He's just stirring up people to get the votes. Once he's in, he's really going to be a nice guy. Then in 1924, after uh, Hitler had been in jail, they said, well, I guess we made a mistake. And yes, Hitler was elected democratically, and uh, people thought he was just a nutcase, and uh, many people um, didn't think he would last long, especially the ones who were in power, especially the ones who were uh, aristocratic. Of course, this proved to be wrong. Um, And what I think is very similar and what I think um, both people like Trump and Hitler draw on is uh, at the time Hitler said, well, let's make Germany great again because they had just lost lost the First World War. Germany had lost so much territories and they wanted revenge. And I think that's what um, Donald Trump is, is drawing on. He wants make he wants to make America great again. And he's talking to people who think they are entitled to more and uh, so there are lots of very dangerous parallels and I think uh, I mean what is Trump standing for I don't know is he standing for family values or uh, friendship I don't know I don't, what, what does he stand for and that's the big question for me well and, and I don't have that answer frankly and in, in fact nobody seems to when I ask them I think I mean you mentioned the um, Steve Bannon and you mentioned the bright people surrounding Hitler yeah. yes he had somebody called Josef Goebbels and he was a master of propaganda and that's what Breitbart is it's just uh, fake news um, looking 
honorable or I don't know what they what it looks like. I've never actually looked on Breitbart because I think it's a uh, right wing fascist propaganda. And Goebbels was a master in that. And Breitbart, uh, well, and and Steve Bannon, who's who runs Breitbart. I think he knows how to uh, manipulate very well. And <coughs> actually, uh, didn't he take credit for the election? Uh, having, yes. Having uh, brought uh, Trump on in, into power. Five years of work. Yeah. And now he's rec he's compensated. Now he gets what he wanted. I wonder what what his salary will be under under Trump. Well, and also to think that this uh, global platform that speaks to a certain kind of appetite um, would be based in the Oval Office of the White House of a superpower um, is kind of extraordinary. Again, what does Trump really think? You don't know. He says yeah. this and then he says that. Yeah. He on contradicts himself um, all the time. And that's the big danger. Why would he stand for suddenly, you know, tolerance and, and uh, uh, democracy and pluralism and what have you? No, he, he stands for what he talked about before. So... Uh, I think it's going to be very dangerous, uh, especially with all these Nazis now coming out of their rat holes. And um, what I fi find very um, unsettling is um, when you see all the the hate attacks and, and hatred motivated attacks that happen yeah. in the U.S. right now. I mean, guess what it will be once he's um, in power in on January twentieth. The same thing you saw with Brexit, before Brexit and after Brexit. Now you have all these hate crimes soaring in uh, in Britain. And uh, that's the big danger. And I think Trump, I mean, he's going to be pipe like Pippi Longstocking. He will just <laughs> make the world as he pleases and uh, he won't have any um, any resistance by anybody, um, I think. And I'm worried that he will just place the wrong people in the in the in the in the seats that he needs to to gain more and more power and then when you see what Hitler and the Nazis did I mean it was a bunch of crooks and they just took over all the institutions and that's what Trump and likes of Bannon and other and Pence will do they just will place the right people at the right uh, in the right positions and then get more and more power until until a point where you can't swap it anymore one of the things that's a real luxury for us is to hear outside voices because our discourse all happens in America amongst each other and we're not taught this stuff in school. We have no institutional memory. We have no history of anything. George Washington never told a lie and wrote a, across <coughs> the Potomac. That's about it. So we don't really understand this stuff. Well, you know, I want a last point. I learned a friend of mine voted for Mr. T because she wanted a businessman in the White House. And Not from the A team. That's a different Mr. T. Yes, and uh, <laughs> I was shocked, and I don't know how to, you know, um, talk to her now because, to me, it's like a like a personal offense. She voted for somebody who is against all what I stand for, yeah. all my lifestyle. Yet um, she is an artist, yes. you know, struggling one, and tries to make end me ends meet in in Los Angeles, and I wonder why on earth would she vote for Donald Trump? And I think there's so many people who just did the same thing. And um, it's it's a total confusion in this country where people don't know what's right and wrong. And I think the problem here, what I see from the outside, is that you don't have any compass. You know, north, south, east, west. People don't know where is what. And everybody's talking. And by talking and just, you know, not stating the facts because people don't know what the facts are anymore everybody's confused and what I see when I came to this country especially since the election is n nobody knows anymore is he gonna turn America into a fascist state or not is he saying things just to gain attention it's a total state of confusion and um, I don't see where the US is headed nor does anybody outside of the US uh, think where where the US is headed I just feel that uh, you're going to have so many weirdos and fascists and fundamentalists and religious fundamentalists that will um, undermine what the U.S. used to stand for. Well put. And I want to thank you so much for coming on. Jan Tussing is a German journalist, filmmaker who has been working with German public radio for 20 years uh, internationally all over the place. Thank you for coming in and offering an alternate 
ex uh, perspective, uh, a refreshing one indeed, especially from somebody whose country went through this in a very real and material way. So I appreciate your coming on today.